John, thank you so much for talking with us. Tell me, first of all, about the process of, of designing, constructing, and today unveiling this honor space. Yeah, it was, a, it, was, it was a multifaceted process. And I would tell you that what we realized early on uh, was we certainly needed a space that would honor the victims, uh, the lives that were lost, and the survivors. We wanted a place that was appropriate, appropriately reflecting you know, the community and the neighborhood and the people that were involved. And we realized early on that we weren't the ones that were going to be able to objectively uh, run that process. So we partnered with uh, Joy Kubler, who is a local architect who has been involved in so many of these public spaces. And she ran a very thoughtful and meaningful process with um, the families of the victims, with our TOPS associates, with so many people in the community to learn and to understand what they were feeling and how they looked at this space, how they looked at tops, how they looked at the corner of Jefferson and Landon and Jefferson and Riley. Um, and from there, she was able to synthesize some ideas and sort of almost process it through them again and understand what they want to have, what they want to see, what would be reflective of their emotions. And so what she helped design, along with some others, was uh, the honor space that we uh, unveiled today. And one of the most um, rewarding things, I think, for me was when I came to the site earlier uh, this afternoon, right about, uh, about noon, I saw so many people from the community already actively engaged in the honor site. There were, there were people sitting on the benches. There were people having lunch. There were people talking. There were people taking pictures looking at the artwork and the sculpture, reading the signs. And, and it, was, it was very rewarding to me to see the community already instinctively engaging into that space. And it's packed out there now. I mean, people really are enjoying the space um, and, and a place for them to go and, and really reflect on what is a tough day for so many people. You, I know, have been very involved in the community coping with what happened two years ago, but also your associates. How are they doing, um, and how is TOPS doing two years after that? Yeah, I, I'm happy to report that the associates uh, from this store, from this Jefferson uh, store, are doing very well. Everyone is on their own separate healing journey, but most of the associates are actually back to work. Not all of them at the store. Some of them are, are working at other stores, and, and that is wonderful. Uh, we want them to feel comfortable. We want them to, to be back at work. and. Uh, and they're so, they're so proud to be TOPS associates, but there's certainly a core group of associates in this store that have it as their mission to serve this community. So they didn't want to go to another store. They wanted to work here. So, um, and, and they're doing very well. The store is doing, uh, it's, it, it's been a tremendous journey. The store is doing very well. What we found is there are still people from the community, I think, that find it difficult to come into the store. There are some people, and we certainly understand that. Um, we try to engage with those people to see if there's a way we, we, we can slowly introduce them back into the store. But what we found is there are so many people coming from outside this immediate neighborhood that are coming to the store to support us. So the store is actually doing better than it's ever been, and in large part to Again, the community of Buffalo sort of wrapping their arms around, around this door and the team and, and the community and, and supporting, supporting it. Well, congratulations on this unveiling today and, and the public support um, that already exists for it, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.